Welcome back everybody. In this video, we're going to cover the interpreter design pattern. It aims to take some kind of language and put some computation behind that language, right? So we're going to take a look at a string or a collection of strings, some piece of text, and then we're going to execute some code behind it. This pattern is very easy to recognize and understand what it should do. Uh, its complexity lies in its implementation and I would say its scarcity. There's not many implementations going about. Usually if they get implemented once, they will get reused. And we'll take a look at some examples of very successful applications of the interpreter pattern. Nevertheless, if you're enjoying these videos, don't forget to like, subscribe. If you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comment section. Let's dig in into the example that I have here. Specifically, the language I've decided to choose is not for us programmers, although we have our own interpreters meant for our use case. This is more for the business side of things. So let's say I am in a retail business where we sell, order, loan, I don't know, things, right? Products going about back and forth. And the general thing is filling out a form with products and whatnot or going to someone's website is too long, right? I can just say, buy me 10 bottles of Coca-Cola and one croissant that has chocolate in or something like that. And then the order will get filled out automatically. It will get paid by the system and that's it, right? And I'm going to put that order through Alexa or Google Home or whatever the vo one of the voice devices or Siri, you know, I don't want to sit there and fill out a form online. I just want to say, order me this and then later on it gets delivered to me. Easy enough, right? As long as we can interpret the human speech and translate it into something like order me 10x of two liters waters of bottles from whatever shop, uh, the system should be able to create an order and route it to the correct uh, place and then automatically pay for it. So the main distinctions to make here is we have some kind of language and in our scenario, this language could be well understood by anybody. Then we have the grammar representation. Now, this is going to look very, very funky if you don't understand regex and you don't understand regex named capture groups. Otherwise, this should be pretty self-explanatory. If you don't know regex and you want me to make a tutorial on regex, leave a comment. Nevertheless, uh, I've put, hopefully I've put quite descriptive names. Here we have an optional space, right? So you you can put a space or you cannot put a space. Uh, it depends on what you want to do. But essentially, we have some kind of uh, quantity. So X stands for this X, backslash, backslash, D plus, multiple digits that will stand for this number. And that is what I'm capturing in this group. So later on, when I want to query for a value from the string, that's what I want to extract. I want to extract this quantity. And I, when I say, give me the quantity, it will give me this number. Next thing is the product instruction where in my single quotes, I will have again a product group. And when I query for a product, it will give me whatever is contained in these quotes here. Finally, I have the source. Where do I want to order from? From and then again source. So when I ask for the source, whatever comes after the space, Tesco, uh, you can notice here I have uh, for the product, I have words, numbers, and essentially letters and spaces. So you can see I included this space. So one or more of these here for the name of the source, I only have words. So if this would have had a space, it would break. But nevertheless, for this example, this will do. And then finally, I comprise the whole order out of uh, these grammar pieces. The point is, is that we can have multiple commands, not only an order command where I have order, optional space, quantity, product, source. So we order a quantity of some product from somewhere. We can sell a product from some kind of source to some kind of customer, right? We can comprise infinite number of grammar representations. That just means sentences that we can interpret. At the moment, if we say sell, 10 two liter water, water bottles from Tesco, and we don't have a command for this, we wouldn't know how to interpret it. So this is where our design, our just design pattern we're trying to apply, not necessarily that we're applying it wrong. It just doesn't know how to parse it. It doesn't know how to understand it. It's as if you would have invalid syntax in your C-sharp code. We cannot compile it. Okay, but hopefully you get the picture. We can create infinite numbers of instructions that we can parse. So if I talk to my Alexa or whatever, 
uh, and uh, she understands and she can create this uh, string, uh, she should be able to file the order and pay for it automatically. Okay, so I don't have to go online, fill out some form, wait for my internet to load, whatever. Uh, crazy process, right? Anyway, uh, we have the domain language. So we have the language, the language that we speak, and then we have the grammar representation. So this is how we can represent all possible sentences that we can expect. Okay, and then I have a order at the moment. This is a very, very simple thing just for the example. And the in interpreter lives in this function. In a real world scenario, what you're going to end up with is a dedicated object for parsing the language using the grammar into some kind of code. Right now, I'm opting in just for a function because I want my example to be as simple as possible. And it only does sort of string to object mapping. It doesn't do any functionality. Hopefully you have enough imagination to understand that the, this language can not only be mapped to a data representation object, it can also be mapped to functionality, same way your code, your C sharp code gets mapped to machine language and gets executed on the computer. Here, all we're doing is we are taking the order, we're par parsing the domain language and the way that I exp explained how I take out these parameters, that's what happens here. So I take the regex where I set that the order command is the regex that I wanna run. I run it against the command that I'm supplying. And then I say, right, if it's not matched, return null and then uh, whatever error handling, if it's a full blown interpreter object and you're comprising instructions and you want to execute some kind of script, uh, then you want proper implementation here. But uh, purely for the sake of the example, we then go ahead and extract certain values from the regex expression. We fill them in the order and we get an order in the end. If we run this, we go ahead and get our order with quantity of 10, uh, product 10 liter water bottles and source from Tesco. Now this specific example is again on the business side and doesn't contain any functionality. We're literally taking a string and representing it as a C-sharp object, right? With just some state in it. More real world examples of interpreters are things like regex, for example. So I've written some, you know, crazy language right here. And regex is so widely used that you will find it implemented in all languages, outside of languages. Well, it's literally used everywhere. And it's the same notation in every language. So you've learned, learned the skill and you're able to use this language everywhere. So it's decoupled from programming. So the language is regex. The grammar are individual signs, groups, uh, character, special characters, etc. That's the grammar, right? Same as in Russian, we would have different letters compared to English. It's different grammar. Here in English, you wouldn't have backslash backslash D plus. That doesn't mean too much. Once you're speaking regex, that means multiple, one or more numbers. And the interpreter pattern is just understanding that you have some kind of language and you want to map it to some functionality once you parse it. And that's it. So not hard to understand, not hard to recognize. It will be hard to implement. And the amount of work will depend on the sophistication of your language. Other good examples of interpreter patterns is essentially having a language like C sharp and then the comp compiler using an interpreter to interpret whatever code you have written here. This will be same for Java, C++, uh, Python, Clojure, and a plethora of other programming languages. All compilers have interpreters to understand what the heck have you written and how to do something on the back of it. Other languages include things like SQL, if you have Elastic, you have your domain specific language, your DSL, which is your either Lucene syntax or their custom JSON query language, wacky. And if you have a yeah, BigQuery, I think that still uses SQL. So again, just think some kind of language, some kind of script, take a look at it. The computer takes a look at it. It's more or less human readable, and then it maps it to some kind of computation. And this right here is just an example of some tools that you can use to grab a sentence of a language, somehow represents its grammar, and then go ahead and have a mini interpreter to parse it. There are other tools like uh, Bacchus Naur form, hopefully I'm pronouncing correctly, which is used by Antler, where you can really create a syntax tree for your own custom programming language and use Antler to essentially parse that into some kind of other programming language.
This will be it for this video. Hopefully you understand the interpreter pattern a little bit better. Thank you very much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section.